No Simple Road is stoked to have Sunset Lake CBD back with us as our sponsor. Sunset Lake is the real deal. If you've looked around trying to find CBD and it just didn't do what it was supposed to do, this is the place you need to go. They've got every kind of product you can imagine, including CBD tinctures with sleep gummies that are great for getting to bed, CBD gummy bears and reishi infused chews that can help bring you a little bit of calm in a stressful day. They've got salve. They've got smokable hemp flower that's great for folks like me that don't want to get stoned and paranoid, but want to have the benefits of cannabis. Well, now you got it. And they even carry CBD products for your pets, man. I'm saying this is Darwin approved stuff. Go over to sunsetlakecbd.com and check out the full range of what they have. This is Vermont grown right to your door and they're giving you 20% off. So put in the promo code NSR20 when you're checking out, you're going to get 20% off your whole order. And I know you're going to love it. They even have subscription options open for you. So you don't forget to get your medicine. Go check out Sunset Lake CBD, everybody. Since the advent of clothing, it's been man's mission to find clothing that looks cool, feels good, and represents who they are, man. And and I think one company has really done done justice when it comes to the mission of making people not naked anymore. And that is our <laughs> shop, shop, shop tour bus. Tour bus. Shop yeah. tour bus. That's right, shop Yay. tour bus. They have the coolest Grateful Dead inspired merch anywhere on the planet. You can't find cooler stuff anywhere. I urge you to don't even try go to shoptourbus.com or at shoptourbus on instagram check out what they have and and then you're going to be blown away and then you're going to order something and it's going to come to you in a hand design one of a kind box and it's going to have all kinds of extra trinket shits on the inside and some of you might even get a a miracle bootleg bootleg. on the inside of your order like (laughs) a a real cassette tape that has like grateful dead music from a fan that taped it in in the parking not in the parking lot in the in the audience I guess you could tape it from the parking yeah. lot. It wouldn't sound well, very good. And then they also have other all kinds of other cool stuff. Like they have, they brought the mugs back. The cool like metal camping mugs. Those are back now. You need to go over and check them out at Shop Tour Bus on Instagram, shoptourbus.com. They got all th- kinds of things going on and the comfiest shirts in the world to me. And when you do that, put in the promo code no simple road, all one word, so that you can get free shipping from the family over at Shop Tour Bus. And, uh, you okay over there, Apple? Yeah. You good, man? Yeah, allergies. Okay. <laughs> and uh, hey, you know, don't forget to tell them that No Simple Road sent you by putting in their promo code promo code because you will get the free shipping and, and then you'll see the coolest stuff ever and you'll be not naked and shop tour bus. No Simple Road. Yeah, here we go. Saris in a sack. That's the saying, Mel. <laughs> Why don't you just put your saris in a sack? It's fine, man. Hey, everybody. What's happening? Hey, now, No Simple Road family. This is Aaron. It's Mel. And it's Apple. And we're back for another <laughs> episode of No Simple Road, <laughs> man. Yeah. We're, we, we're newly landed yeah. back in the studio. Yay. Still figuring out who we are. Don't we are. Um, this is... Uh, <laughs> who am I? Uh, yeah, man. I, I'm it's, super excited for this week. You know... Go ahead. No, it. no. You know what? <laughs> Please finish your thought, Mel. I don't want to interrupt. Well, I was just thinking they don't know because we're here every week, but sometimes it feels like so long that we've stepped down here. Oh, I know. That it feels like we have to warm up or something. <laughs> but yeah, I, we're a little rusty. Yeah, but nobody on this that the other side knows that we're just feeling that. Well, and, and in reality, I think it's been maybe six days since the last time we recorded. Which is quite a bit since we do it two twice a week. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we just got back from Winter Wondergrass, and I what I was going to say is I, I can't wait to tell you all about our whole... Winter Wondergrass extravaganza 
that happened. It was, it was an extravaganza. Holy for sure. Yeah, there's shit, a man. lot to tell. Yeah, that's lot. that's gonna be a long, a lot of goodness episode. Uh, all I'll say about it right now is, if you have the chance, or if you ever wondered what it's like, don't wonder. Get to Winter <laughs> Wondergrass. Go to one of them. Yeah, for sure. Um, before we get into this week's guest, who is John the Barber Gutwillig from the Disco Biscuits. Yeah. Disco Biscuits. Before we get into that Ooh. whole Touchdowns all day. thing, I, I have some family news that I need to share with everybody. Um, when we were at Wondergrass, we ha- got to spend some time with Sam Grisman and, um, and Rachel and found out and about Chris. and Chris and and found out about something that's going on with our extended Grateful Dead family that I wanted to call out to you guys. Um, Uncle Jay, who is uh, Sam's Uncle Jay, uh, is f- battling cancer right now. And um, the prognosis is not great. And um, Jay is a uh, pinnacle of the Grateful Dead family. You've probably never heard his name. But I guarantee if you've seen pictures of Jerry Garcia and David Grisman playing music at home together, you know, those pictures with like Sam in Jerry's guitar case, you've seen Jay in the background holding a joint. Jay is the guy that was responsible for growing a lot of Jerry's weed. And um, like Sam said, throughout almost all their recordings, the, the, he was the one that provided the flower for this. Yeah. So this is the the guy that was the, the facilitator for the, the, the headspace that occurred. Um, and he, like I said, he's battling uh, cancer right now. And um, there's a GoFundMe set up for Uncle Jay. And uh, so I'm thinking about the best way for you all to go make donations would be to go to GoFundMe and click and search J Sabellos, J A Y, and then his last name is spelled C E B A L L O S Medical Fund. And that'll bring up his his GoFundMe. And uh, I'm gonna also put a link to the GoFundMe on the No Simple Road website. So you can go there too. If if you go there and it's not up yet, go to GoFundMe and search J C E B A L L O S Medical Fund. And then you can, you can donate that way. Um, th- these are people that have lived rurally and grown weed since the seventies, the maybe late sixties and, um, live very simply and don't have a lot, don't have a retirement. They, they gave everything they had to grow in the, go in the plant that makes people feel better. And, yeah. and now it's time for the family to rally around them and help them. And for like what Sam said to him, always being there for Jerry and providing him his weed and stuff. And he helped facilitate a lot of what we love and listen to. Yeah. So let's, let's do, do the kind thing and, and give back, put your money where your love is folks. So that's, that's that. And, um, so moving on to happier news, we're back and, <laughs> and we have John, on the show this week, I'm stoked, man. Yeah. This this was this was so much fun. This is such a fun conversation. He is so fun to talk to, and that that's this was pure conversation and fun the so entire time. He we had this scheduled back in January when the winter storm hit. This this actually this had gotten scheduled like going as far back as November, and and I got sick, and we had to cancel. Then John missed one. Then our power went out. So this was like a true um, exercise in tenacity. Yes. Us getting this done. Yes. And there's still one more of those that we, that it's out there that we need to tie up. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have one more. Um, but this was this, like Apple said, this was a blast and the, the biscuits, man, they, you know, the whole eclipse set that they just did that was fucking incredible. They have a movie out. You can go to their website. What's, yeah, if you what's go, the deal, Apple? If you go to their website, uh, discobiscuits.com, and it talks about the new album. And if you scroll down, it has a button to click, watch the movie. And it sends you right over to YouTube, and you can watch the 25-minute movie, Revolution in Motion. And uh, I enjoy. urge you to go, go see it, yeah. Yeah. And, and they just did the rock opera. 
I mean, well, and he's got touchdowns all day. His podcast. So I was getting there. Yeah, this is a lot. This man is putting out a lot of content yeah. and working his patootie off. And I, I just, I mean, obviously, if you're listening to this, you're fans of the Disco Biscuits, and you know who John is, and Barber, and, and what he's all about, and. We had not had the opportunity to see the biscuits until very recently here yeah. in Portland. This past and, uh, a few months ago, right? Yeah. And just all I have to say is, holy shit, man. To do what they do is is really something. It was a really Extra fun sensory night. is the only word that comes to mind. I oh, guess yeah. that's a good we, way to put it. And we danced our asses off at that show. Yeah, it was a sweaty mess when that was done. Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, let's do the do the business and get them to the interview. Follow Shall us. we? Yeah. Wait. Oh, I have one last thing. Follow us. Follow us. Don't well, also follow us. But hey, Skyler, if you're listening, this is for you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's, yeah. Skyler, Skyler reached out to us on um on Instagram in the DMs. He had signed up on our Patreon for a buck, and he was like, oh, "Hey, man." Oh, maybe do you want to say about that? He has, he was like, "Hey, man." Um do you guys have a PayPal? I wanted to give you a gift. And uh, I was like, yeah. And I gave him our PayPal and Skylar blessed us with a generous, a fat kick down and uh, said, this is for everything you guys have gotten me through in the past couple of years. Aww. So Skylar, thank you, brother. And like I said, in the DMS, if you, if you ever need anything, hit me up and, and we'll talk, man. I'm, right I'm here. On. So uh, yeah, let's, let's I do wanted the business. To, uh, give Ben one more shout out. Um, Ben, I sent you that, um, art piece and you had mentioned, um, John Barber and if we'd gotten to see the movie and all the stuff and the similarities in the artwork. And so I just wanted to say, I know about this in the background, but also wasn't cued in, which now it's making it even that much. Now it makes sense. Yeah, (laughs) it makes sense. But this is, um, this is your episode. So I hope you enjoy. Dedicated to Ben. Yeah. Dedicated to you, Ben. Follow No Simple Road at No Simple Road. Go to our website, do website stuff. Go sign up for our newsletter there. Get merch, get a tarot reading from Mel and I. Do the, do the website at nosimpleroad.com. Also, Go to patreon.com forward slash no simple road. That's how you can financially support NSR. Like I've said in the past weeks, no simple road does cost a dollar a month. That's 12 and a half cents an episode to you and me. And if you're not paying, Hey, nobody's going to know, but that's what it costs. So it's on the honor system and uh, go to patreon.com forward slash no simple road. Go over to Apple Podcasts. Leave us a review, please. This is important. <laughs> see, it's algorithm working, which we all don't know how that works. But it somehow, it if you do this, it day. helps get it in front of people. And we have a new review. Did you guys what? leave this ra- last week? No. No. This is from April 3rd, Chicken Noodle Soup. No. Uh-uh. Oh, we have a new review. I want to read one. You want to read it? I did last one. That's You've fair. You've been the last couple, Here. actually. Here, yeah. Mel. Here, Perfect. I got it pulled up. Oh, Thank you. you. I'm Cued handing up. the phone to Mel, everybody. All right. Theater of the Mind. So this is from Travis123, <laughs> one, um, and the title is Chicken Noodle Soup. Chicken noodle soup is good for your soul, and so is this podcast. From live music to soul searching, the NSR crew opens up their home and takes you on a journey every week. Not only has this group of amazing individuals brought on some of my favorite musicians, but they have also introduced me to some of my new favorite bands. Mel, Aaron, and Apple do an incredible job of taking us down their trip and then back to reality. Thanks for sharing your adventures, gang, and I can't wait for the next trip. Much love from the mountain. Oh, Aww. that's so sweet. That is sweet. Thank Aww. you so much for doing that. See how Travis, easy that was? That was so <clears throat> sweet. And how happy we all are now. You Aww. can do that for us, too. I, I, like, love I that. like that. Several play on words in mm-hmm. there and stuff. Very well done. Well done. Sorry. Very well done. Well done. Okay. And then uh, what else, Apple? 971-808-1524. That is the tepid line. Operators are not standing by, as we say. This is your chance to do whatever you want. You have three minutes to give a trip report, tell a story, joke, sing. Sing us a song. For example, oh, hey, I've got a dog. My favorite dogs are Dutch hounds. And, hey, I love you. You know, Dutch hounds. Okay, whatever. Mel just made up a breed. (laughs) 
I'm anyway. sure there's hounds. Dutch They're called hounds. Dutch hounds. Okay. Um, anyway, whatever. And then, <laughs> <laughs> see, you made me lose my train of th- See, we won't interrupt you when you call into the tepid line. We're not no able one to. will interrupt you. You can just make a mistake. You can keep going. You can also be totally coherent. No one's going to stop you like Aaron did. That's right. 971-808-1524. But last but not least, please just tell somebody that you know and love about No Simple Road. That is how the mycelial network of our little community here Gross. continues to thread itself into the knots that make up the mycelium that and, grow so and the, deep and create roots. That is also the easiest way to thing to do too. You don't have to use your thumbs nope. or your phone or a computer or think of what to Just write you. Your voice. You open your mouth and say, hey. I love No Simple Road. Okay. So will you. And, and here's the last thing. I saw something today that was really cool before we get to, to Barber. Was it Darwin? Darwin is really cool. I see him every day. <laughs> so there's three kinds of people in your life. All right. Okay. There's leaf people, like leaves on a tree. When things get stormy or the wind blows hard, they blow away. Okay. okay. There's branch people. And the branch people... You have to test them to see if they're strong. Okay. okay? They could they could snap and, and, and fall away. That's or right. Something. And over time, things could make them break away or fall off yeah. and, and they'll go away. And then there's the root people in your life. And the root people are the ones that feed you and hold you down and keep you grounded and help you grow. And are not going anywhere. And those are the people that we need to take care of in our lives. And and I do believe that That's great. Barber is a root person for Aww. a lot of people out there. Oh, yeah. Right? And so let's do this. You ready? Yeah. All right. I'm ready. Mel? Are you ready, Mel? Are you ready? You have to say yes. I'm ready. Okay. Sorry. You, you shook your head. <laughs> we're, just saying, we're not on air. I wish you guys could have seen that. She looked at me Video like she waves. was like, you know when your friend hit the bowl too hard and he's just like, what'd yeah, you say? What? That's, that was a little. That was All right, let's good. try that again. You ready, Apple? I'm ready. You ready, Mel? Heck yeah, right. I'm ready. Ooh. Without further ado, the No Simple Road crew gives you John, John the, the Barber, Barber Gut Willig. How about that? There, there we go. Yeah. How about that? Well, I'm not recording my audio now. Oh, and you want me to record my audio, right? No, you don't have to. But if you I don't have to. No. You guys are that advanced that I don't have to record <laughs> I did, my audio. Dude, I have I have audition recording it and Zoom recording it. If something crazy happens, we got a backup. Yeah, a backup. It would sound great if I could record it. Okay, then it. do it. Yeah, yeah, do it. I can't. I, I can't because oh, they like changed my they like changed. Mm-hmm. I like I downloaded an update and now I can't oh. run anything anymore. What did you what Lame. are you what are you recording with? I have a Universal Audio Apollo. Oh. And it, I I I have like five units by them all over the place. Right. You know, I have one here, I got one right there, I got one backstage with the biscuits, I got one on stage with the biscuits. And then I have uh, whatever that's enough, right? So, <laughs> I, and but I have my computer, and when I move my computer from unit to unit, the system just gets angrier and angrier <laughs> until it gets to where we are now, where it doesn't work anymore. Dang I'm it. like, I don't know. You got the recording. It's, let's, it, whatever. It's whatever. all good, man. It's not the stress over I don't yeah. need my, I'll leave it here just so people know we're podcasting. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> John, what's up, what man? What's going on, dude? <laughs> we made it happen, man. Finally. Uh, 
Oh, hold on, I'm itchy. I'm itchy. Um, yeah, we did it. I, 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 I applaud all of our perseverance it's, to make this happen. Oh yeah, stick to itiveness um. is nothing <laughs> lo- lost on us. That's for fucking sure, brother. So, John, right. since since the last time we had you on the show, man, uh, yeah. when we had you on before, we had never seen a biscuits show. Mm-hmm. Never. No. no. No, and we we seem to know what you're talking about, right? Well, well I mean, we listen, oh, we to music. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we just have we have yeah. our own dance parties in the driveway and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. But, but, you, but you can't thank you for bringing us some West Coast love and coming mm-hmm. to Portland because oh, damn, right. you guys yeah, you threw guys, down. That was a great show. It too. was a great yeah. show. It was, it was from yeah. beginning to end. Every note was a great show. Like, thank you again so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, we. uh we know we got to bring it in Portland. That's for sure. <laughs> Why? What's and, the What's the yeah. reason it's so long from you know 2011 to 2023? Yeah. Why so long? Well, it was. We used to live out there, so we played there from time to time, and um, we used to live in the San Francisco, Santa Cruz area, and so we would play there, and we just felt like people like really treated us like East Coasters. Oh. And um, and we were traveling when we we're on the West Coast, we would be in like a bus with a trailer <sighs> and somebody would have to drive. It was like a whole thing. Like we weren't very well organized <laughs> and we didn't know about drivers and but we couldn't afford buses. And so it was like a limited operation at that point. And driving all the way up to, you know, yeah. Portland and Eugene and all of San Francisco, like those drives will kill you. You yeah. know what I mean? And having to play a show that night. So driving all night, th- sometimes through snow yeah. and then playing a show. And then you just feel like your shows aren't very good because you're exhausted and mm-hmm. you're not like energetic enough to feel maybe you did play a good show. You know what I mean? Like we yeah. used to play great shows at the Crystal Ballroom. Yeah. But I used to leave the crystal ball room like more exhausted than I'd ever been in my entire life. So it was, uh, it, was it was hard for us to tour uh, on the on the West Coast. And we just, you know, we were hoping for some big event to happen in our careers that would make the West Coast thing happen. And then we, we ended up just like changing managers a bunch and doing a lot of stuff that wasn't productive towards that. You like coffee? Yes. Yeah. I like coffee. Coffee's good. You know what's I, even better than coffee? Our new coffee sponsor. No, really good coffee. <laughs> made by our sponsor. <laughs> they, they, look, seriously, man, life is too short to drink shitty coffee. It's just that simple. You can, this is you true. Can, you can do other stuff and skimp, but if you're gonna wake up every morning and have something to drink, or in the afternoon have something that's good and delicious. Make it Northbound Coffee Roasters. It's worth the extra few bucks. And I know, like, it's a commercial, and I'm telling you, hey, Northbound Coffee Roasters, good coffee. I'm not bullshitting. Like, this is really the best stuff I have ever tasted, and I'm a coffee nerd and have tried everything. I've even had $100 a pound bags from Hawaii. Yeah, this is better than that. Northbound Coffee Roasters is a family-owned and operated roastery out of Mount Shasta, California, with a combined 22 years of coffee experience and over 600 Grateful Dead and fish shows between Keith and Jen. That's a lot. Owners I still of the say that, but it's still true. Yeah, that's that's a lot of damn shows. They specialize in specialty organic coffees with a really wide variety of roast profiles, blends, and single origin offerings to match the taste. Anybody who enjoys a cup of coffee, head over to northboundcoffee.com to learn more. And place your order today. They ship anywhere in the U.S. and their coffees are always roasted to order to guarantee the freshest cup. And make sure to use the promo code No Simple Road at checkout for shipping on your first order of any size anywhere in the U.S. And please do sign up for their newsletter so that you can find insider info and other discounts out and like things like their spring tour that's happening right now. Ooh. Which is amazing. We are we are on our way to the fourth week of the coffee spring tour, and you if you could go over and check it out. It the third week coffee was amazing and the artwork is done by paul kreisenbeck yeah it's crazy a huge happy birthday to paul happy birthday paul happy birthday so go to northboundcoffee.com make sure to use the promo code on your first order and and sign up for that spring tour man it ain't over yet okay (laughs) that's a really good explanation Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, it's the West Coast. Every it, all the cities are very far apart, and yeah, yeah you got it in the con, in the conditions up here. Yeah, when on the East Coast, we're so jealous of the East Coast. Sometimes, like you can go catch 
eight shows all within like an hour. Like, yeah. Yeah, and if you're in the band, like, what are you doing on your East Coast tour? You're having brunch with people that you haven't seen in a long time. You're resting. You're 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 sitting backstage working on the show. You're reading the, the stuff about whether your show last night was good, you know. And on the West Coast, you're like coupled in a huge in a van, and you're just like you know white knuckling it up and down some roads that are windy and <laughs> the, 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 the guy in the band who can't drive has to drive and he ends up driving past the dunes and you're like this guy's gonna get us killed <laughs> that's that sounds oddly specific but yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a it's a trip to think that it's been that long because i mean the disc, disco biscuits are a huge band you guys are huge man and and to come out here and have the reception that we saw here in Portland for you guys yeah. was pretty fucking amazing, yeah. bro. Mm-hmm. It, it, uh, it blew my mind. I, I gotta be honest with you. I, I, I mean, I kind of knew what to expect from you, but, uh, I was immensely, immensely, uh, stoked when that show ended. And I have to tell you something, man, disco biscuits have the nicest fucking fans, y- you know, disco biscuits <laughs> fans get shit on social media and they make fun, whatever. The fans that I met at that show were the nicest folks I have come across in a really long time. We were in, like kind of in the back of the room and dancing by the merch table. And, and there was like a giant fan back there. It was great. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> this this cat was like, oh, this next song, this this is whatever. And I was like, hey, this is my first Biscuit show. And oh, he right. spent the whole show with me. Like when you go into the next show, he would be like, okay, this song is this, this is an inversion. This is, you know, he schooled (laughs) me the whole, fuck. Yeah. It was awesome. That happened to me. My first Grateful Dead show. Really? Yeah. My first Grateful Dead show was a giant stadium in New Jersey. And me and my buddy were 12. What? And we went there with my older brother who was like, you know, 17, 18 at the time and all of his friends and they were just dying to ditch us in the lot because <laughs> we were 12. Yes. And so we didn't have shirts on cause we were 12. Uh-huh. We were running around with like our lacrosse shorts on or whatever. And we were like, what are we going to do? Everybody ditched us. What are we going to do? So we were like, let's go check out this, the let's go check out the giant stadium. That'll be cool. And we walked up to Giant Stadium and they were like, you can't come in. It shows it's way too early. And we were like, well, we don't know what to do. And uh, oh, no, no. What happened with this? What happened? We used our tickets to go in. OK. And we walked around a little bit and we we're like, this is cool. And they were like, let's leave. Let's go back. See what my brother's doing. Right. But this is before cell phone. So, like, how do you find these people? You got to go back to the lot. Right. 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 So we go back to the gate and, and the lady, the ticket lady was like, no reentry. And we're like, well, what does that mean? And they're like, well, the second you leave, you can't come back in. Oh, no. And we're, we're like, what are we supposed to do? We don't even have shirts on. You know, <laughs> we were just like, and she literally didn't care less. She was like, if you leave, you can't come back in. Your tickets are no good. If you want to stay, you have to stay. And it was like oh, 3.30 shit. p.m. Oh, shit. So, oh, my gosh. So we're like, what do we do? We're walking around. And we like start talking to this usher. We like go all the way up to the top and look down from the top. Then we go all the way to the bottom and look at the, we literally go to all the gates and we talk to this, this usher guy who, and, uh, and, and we were like, well, we, where we, we haven't gone to the floor yet. And he's like, you want to you buy some passes for the floor, some things. So we gave him $5 each for two little red oh plastic wristbands, God. which means we could go down to the, to the field, which were no seats. Right, right. Because that at the at Giant Stadium was a no seated field, which was probably amazing. Right, mm-hmm. I, we were probably too young to notice how great it was, but nowadays it'd be like, wow, oh that's great. Yeah. And so we went down there, and we walked right up the stage, and um, there's a guy sitting there with his glasses on and his little bag and his stuff and his little. He was like an old head, right? Who'd been there probably a thousand shows. He told us how many shows he went to. I forgot. And he had a chess board. So, and I was playing chess at the time. So I was like, I'll play you in chess. And you can tell us about why, you know, because we had listened to the music. I mean, I was a guitar player at the time. So I knew what we were in okay. for, but we'd never gone to one before. And we were right down 
And, uh, you know, we played chess for like four hours and he told us everything he could tell us about the dead. He went on like a 45 minute ramble about smokestack lightning, okay. which I couldn't believe it. He was like chasing the song for like 400 years. And then finally, we, you know, we walked right up. We stood right at the front row. And the band came out and played Feel Like a Stranger. Ah. And that was the beginning of the Grateful Dead experience for me. That was the first Holy live experience. Holy shit. John, <laughs> Hell your, yeah. your first Grateful Dead experience, minus going in early. And then and being play, 12. And, and, play, and playing. The only and, thing that is, resembles is this song. How no, about that? No, 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 no. <laughs> the getting ditched. I got ditched at my first show by the people that brought me. No and, way. Yeah, yeah, they made sure to puddle them first. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and then... The the song that was playing when I walked into the forum in LA was "Feel Like a Stranger." It was a, what? It was a yeah, yeah, yeah. I, wow, that you know what, man? That's fucking dope to have an mm-hmm. old head chill with you and explain everything. And just think, man, like I had that same experience now, however many years later, at a disco biscuit show. It's springtime. It's time for shows to be outside and outdoors and Yay. nature and fun and music and family. And what goes better with fun and music and family than some mushroom chocolates? Well, 20% off mushroom chocolates. That's what. That's for sure. You, you really want 20% off. Yeah. And not just 20% off mushroom chocolates, 20% off mushroom gummies which they have elderberry, tangerine, and pineapple flavor. And then if you don't like gummies or chocolates, they got you covered with capsules. Yep, Melt Premium Mushroom Chocolates. That's what we're talking about. Go to at Melt Mushrooms on Instagram, M-E-L-T-M-U-S-H-R-O-O-M-S. Hit them up in the DMs. Tell them No Simple Road sent you. You're going to get 20% off for the month of April of your order. And uh, yeah, you can get chocolates, bars, the whole bar that has four grams of their sacred mushroom blend and a bunch of other adaptogens in there. You can get capsules, you can get gummies, you can even get their minis and you can keep a bunch in your pocket. You can hand them out to your friends at shows and do a whole thing. It's it's fun in a sack. That's, that's right. It's, that's what it is. And that so, just sounds like fun in a sack. That's right, man. So go check out Melt Premium Mushroom Chocolates on Instagram at Melt Mushrooms. I know. That's, that's so weird. That's crazy. I you had a shirt on. Song, the same first song. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and that that's a great first show story. We always ask everybody that's into the dead. It's like, tell us, because everybody remembers their first show. That was yeah, great. Yeah. Most hey, people. That, that, the, that's true. <laughs> so, yeah. Some people. Not like, everybody. Oh, yeah. I don't remember. It was sometime in the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> John. I mean, honestly, the hardest thing to remember about your first show, unfortunately, is the music. There's always some other event that accompanies it. That you meet someone or or you 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 like don't know where everybody is or you get locked in a giant stadium or something like that. There's always something that accompanies it that makes it crazy. Oh, what, yeah. what the fuck were you doing at twelve years old? Running around the dead show, bro. <laughs> I was a pretty committed guitar player from an early age. Okay. okay. And my best friend was a drummer and we had a little band and we played dead songs. And we also played, you know, Chili Pepper songs and Smashing Pumpkins and stuff like that. But we did play Dead songs, ironically. So um, Almond Brothers, we played. Um, it was like back then. It was like, you know, late '80s type of vibe. <laughs> Simpler the Dead times. In their stadium tours, they would they would sit in Giant Stadium for like five nights, Ugh. and um, you know, and and it was like forty bucks to sit in the in the nosebleeds. And be part of a dead show, and there would be like topless women running around. It was like a, it was like a '60s moment yeah. in the '80s world, and we would go there and just be like, "This is the greatest." And then, of course, the band would slay. Like I was a guitar player, and I would just watch Jerry play and be like, "Oh my god, this guy's amazing!" And um, and so he was very. I was very. It was a very formative experience for me because I couldn't see Jimi Hendrix. I couldn't see Jimmy Page. Right. You know, yeah. so it was my other. Uh, you know, real like formative guitar players that I loved were 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 missing in action, and yet Jerry was still on the road and Jerry was still playing shows. I saw the Dead play at Giant Stadium many times. I saw him at MSG. I, I saw him. Um, those are probably the two spots most of the time. Oh wow, Dead show at MSG. That's that's it's, a huge. Deal. Is your brother yeah. a musician also? No, no, my no. brother. Okay, architect. so you you. Always knew you were going to be a musician? I think so, yeah. I think so. Pretty early age, yeah. Huh. Yeah. 
it's that's that's so strange to me to like I'm 52. I'm still figuring out what I want to be when I grow up. I, I you know, I have no. Even a podcaster for a minute. Yeah, right. This is going that, that, that's moved to the this forefront. This one's sticking, I think. Yeah, yeah this, this is it. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of podcasts, man, what's going on with touchdowns all day? Yeah. Touchdowns all day is popping now. Touchdowns all day. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, we did. I did it for a while, and then the pandemic hit, and then I just took a break from it because it was just too much and um and but we kind of kept it going a little bit but now we brought on max dawson who is a, a real podcaster he did a survivor podcast for many many years very successful one and he happens to be an aficionado of the biscuits he's one of our first disco biscuit fans oh wow and his episodes on touchdown all day were the highest rated episodes because he lends this kind of fan perspective mm. that apparently I wasn't getting to. You're was, a little too inside, I think. <laughs> yeah, you might have a, a, a different too, perspective than we do. Yeah. Little, <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't counting when the plays were and when the songs were. And so the two of us decided to team up and make a new podcast that has, you know, interviews from both of our perspectives, uh, the similar format to the original touchdowns all day, but just, you know, putting it out all the time and making more episodes. So wow. Do you, so we've been doing no simple road going on seven years Thanks. this July. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. That's um, amazing. Congratulations. Thanks thank man. You. And I've realized this far in that it's hard. Podcasting is hard. People think, Oh, I'm going to start a podcast. It's going to be super easy. And it, it's not what, what's been your experience with, with doing touchdowns all day. Well, you know, there's there's a lot of I, I tell a lot of jokes and stuff on touchdowns all day. I have a little rant where I make fun of the world. And um, it's hard to think of that on a regular schedule like that. Mm. It really like the first touchdowns all day is that stuff would just come to me and I'd be like, oh, I'll go podcast right now. This is great. And then the pandemic was like so depressing that I didn't really want to make fun of anybody because like the, it was so like the political unrest alone was enough. To Nobody could like, take I it. I just want to hide. Yeah. It was yeah. Like you guys Fuck sort this. this out. Call me when you're done. Yep. Um, and so I didn't really want to jump into that fray because it was just, it's too much for me. So but now like, yeah, the hardest thing about podcasting is you make a podcast. It's awesome. And then you just have to make another one next week. <laughs> and that is a crazy right amount yeah. of work to do on week five. Week one, it's fine. Week two, it's great. Week three, you're like, wow, this is cool, but I don't know. Week four, you're like, oh my god, I barely got that one in in time. And week five, you're like, I have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> but no wait shit. a minute, how? I mean, you don't feel like that about shows. <laughs> I know. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a it's definitely got to be a labor of love and i feel like it, exactly what you're saying like there's there's shit in the early episodes of no simple road that just like it was magic i i cracked we cracked the mics and like this awesome shit would happen and now seven years in it's like oh wow this is like we created a job for ourselves out of what we do for fun first of all and then second we have to come up with the fucking content now. Yeah. What do we do? Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. And, and people, like you said, like, people expect it once. Like we, we miss it. We miss one here and there when we're going to a festival or we have other stuff going on and we hear about it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like really yeah. not, not be me, but like, man, missed you on my drive to work on Monday. You know, yeah. people expect them to come out on time. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they want it every Monday. And also, uh, after you get like a couple of episodes down the road, I mean, you guys have an awesome website that I've used as an, like, an example for how to make a good website for people. Thanks, man. And your website is great. The colors are great. It works really well. It does the job excellently. And you have to build that. You know, you have to make that. You have to make the Twitter. <laughs> you have to make the Instagram. And like those things are jobs too. And so yeah. it does. It does it does snowball pretty quickly into a full time occupation. And to me, it's like my job is based around not wanting to do anything else mm. because musician is the most insane job to have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And 
especially in a Napster world, right? It's just a crazy job to have. The business is in shambles. You have to drive to pick up every bag of money you ever want. <laughs> and you have to wait another day to get another one. You can't do two in a day. You can only do one in a day. And then you got to drive somewhere else to get the next one on the next day. And everyone in your home life is like, where'd this guy go? Where'd he go? Oh, you know, shit. he's missing. <laughs> and so it's like this crazy weird job that is like, you know, it's it's vacuum sale, traveling vacuum salesman at the highest level. <laughs> and oh my God. you know what I mean? Oh, what? Yeah. Yeah. I this never, is a, wait a minute. I never thought about it that's like that. That's what I'm saying. This is a crazy perspective because, I mean, you're saying it perfectly, but you don't think about that. We're just like, woo, we're going to go see the Disco, Disco Biscuits. Biscuits. Yay. Yeah. And then you, you're on that windy road in, <laughs> in Oregon somewhere. It's fucking snowy. <laughs> the van's got to yeah. blow out. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, isn't that, did you ever see that movie Big Fish where he like, the guy goes, you never saw that movie Big Fish? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. where he tells the it's tall that, tales. That movie was about yeah. my dad. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I've seen the movie. Yeah, he's like a traveling vacuum salesman in that movie, yeah. isn't he? Isn't that what he does? Yep. Right? I always thought it was weird that Fishman played the vacuum. I was like, oh. that's really taking vacuum salesman to another level. Like, yeah. You can really work in that angle right there, buddy. I, I, I can't think of another occupation where like, your job is to go make sure that people have the best time possible. Every time. Every time. <laughs> but you personally, when it's over, you're like, okay, everybody in the van, let's go. Let's get out of here as fast as possible. And down the road you go. Like you, you, you start the party and then disappear. It's, it's tough. I, I imagine, especially being on tour, that it's fucking exhausting. Wow. Well, what happens is you end up joining the party and then <laughs> I don't even remember those years. You know what I mean? You're like, why didn't you come to the West Coast? It's like we forgot the West Coast existed. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere we went, the party was so big and so awesome that we just like got sucked into life or whatever. Oh, my God. Whatever you call that. You know I, mean? yeah, I was backstage for 22 years. I don't know what happened. <laughs> There's another side of the continent. Oh, <laughs> holy <Yeah>. shit. <laughs> So, okay, I I want you to explain something to me, if you can. Um, you you've done a foray into the the rock opera world a couple of times. That's right. Can can you explain like what the the drive was to want to do that? Well, I can write music really fast. Okay. You know, I can make a banger in one day starting with nothing. It's not a problem. I do it right here, right in the seat. And uh, it just comes very natural to me. Uh, I like working with other people and other people really like that job because it's fun. Even if there aren't musicians, I work with non-musicians all the time because they just, the, the fun that they exude, I think ends up in the music. Mm. Right. Okay. And so I think it's just, it's better to have someone sitting there being like, Oh my God, I love this. than it is to have nobody there at all. Right. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a lot of different ways you can mix and match that with music. Lyrics, however, are a very personal thing that when you put them into the song, they can change the song entirely with a, a phrase or a turn. We have a new song called no recollection. The original chorus was a kind of flat concept, maybe a little sexy, but like a, like neither positive nor negative, but it was a little sexy, a little flat. And then we changed it to this kind of outer worldly positive message. And we kind of left the sexiness behind because it's like too positive to be sexy. Um, but the <laughs> verses are still sexy, so I'm fine with it. Okay. But um but you can change a song like that with your lyrics. You can really do that. So those lyrics are were changed and they were upgraded. And I woke up one morning after having a dream of the song, and that was the that chorus was basically the chorus that I changed the lyrics to because that was what was in my dream. And I was like, well, if I dreamed it, it's probably pretty good. And then we tried it <laughs> and it landed with the audience. You know what I mean? And okay. I was like, okay. The feeling of the lyrics is really, really important. So <laughs> lyric writing is something I take very seriously. And if you have a rock opera or a space opera, it really allows you the opportunity to step back from that seriousness and just play in the lyrical world mm. a little bit. You know, you could write a song about this, you write a song about that. There's themes in the story 
that you can hit with your music and your lyrics and feel good about what it is and a more playful and enjoyable kind of fun throwing stuff at the wall seeing what sticks kind of feeling yeah. and it's just a little it's a little less am i telling the story of my life and my own experience yeah. you know that weight is suddenly gone and then you have this oh, i'm just telling this fun story about a bunch of aliens with no hands you know and it's just like <laughs> look at that's what it is now that's, you know and like, let's draw a picture playful. of them and let's tell yeah. a story of them where they where they connect to the electricity I, <laughs> yeah. so wait a minute yeah this started from a dream uh, well, no, I, ha I have dreams about the songs I'm writing all the time because uh, it just is part of it. You know, you dream about what you do. Like if you go to CVS every day, you're going to have a dream that you're at CVS probably repeatedly. Oh my God, so, that would suck. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you never know. So uh, so I sit in music studios all the time and I have a lot of dreams about the songs that I'm making. And sometimes those dreams help me figure out things that aren't written yet. And that happens all the time. Oh, wow. Do you keep a... Um a journal by the bed to, to help you remember shit when you wake up? <laughs> no, no, I don't do that. I should do something like that. Um, but, uh, no, I have not yet. I've yet to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I do remember them though. And I do think about them over the course of a day. I, I haven't really felt the need to like log them for that's later. Fucking crazy. Wow, man. That's it, pretty I, incredible. I mean, actually. Very, very seldom will I have a dream that I can remember into the day. I'll like remember it when I wake up, but then it's like sand slipping through your fingers as you go through your day. It's like kind of disappearing. Like I remember the other day, had a dream. I was pissed off at Apple for something in the dream because he did whatever. And I, when I woke up, I was like, oh yeah, I can't wait to tell him about this. And by the time I made it out to the kitchen to get coffee, it was fucking just poof, smoke gone. Well, thank good. Aaron, Aaron has like night terror dreams sometimes too. He'll be like telling me and Mel, he's like, last night there's like this rabid bunny that was like eight feet tall and was chasing me. And we're like, why the fuck are you telling me this, man? Like that's gotta, gotta terrifying. Gotta share, share the wealth, man. Yeah, what's going on in that I brain? mean, rabid right? bunny dreams are very scary, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. a tough one. <laughs> so, are we? But I will tell you, I have one rule. I have one rule. If I dream about music, that I immediately go into the studio uh -huh. and make it. Okay. And do not wait. Do not have breakfast. Oh, only wow. have a only make a coffee if you can sing it. Keep singing it in your head while you're making the coffee, and then immediately go into the studio and make whatever that beat is, or the groove, or the vibe, or whatever it is in your dream that you can wake up with you have to put it down right away. So it's similar to journaling, and but it's okay. just only when it's a music dream. You're doing an audio journal yeah. when you but get up. That makes sense. So how, yeah. like, how often would you say that happens? Like weekly, monthly, like daily? Like how? I wish it was daily. That'd be so great. Um, I'd have so many songs for daily. <laughs> it's, really, it's really twice a year. Twice a year. Okay. Once or twice a year. But I wake up and I'm like, uh, you know, and it's like the old Mitch Hedberg joke. Like when I think of a joke and when Mitch Hedberg has this joke, where he's like, when I think of a joke in bed and, and, I'm, and, the, ho and the pen's on the table, I, I got to convince myself that the joke wasn't funny. So I don't have to wake up and get the pen. <laughs> <laughs> right? I convince myself the song's no good, so I don't got to get up. <laughs> so I wake up in the morning, I'm like, oh no, now I, have to, now I have to go immediately to work. When I wanted to have a coffee and just schluff around and be a guitar player all morning. Oh. You know, <laughs> so what does it look like to sit down with nothing? Like you haven't had a dream about it. You go into, into the studio right where you're at and what's the what's the first like thing to get you moving that's a great question i have at last tabulation six different ways to deal with that situation oh oh shit okay and basically that situation is obviously that's that's you only want to sit in that situation for five seconds right because what how do you jam out of nothing right yeah um the biscuits can do it but if the biscuits aren't here and it's just me um, I have some things that I do. One thing that I'll do is I'll I'll play acoustic guitar on my old ghosty acoustic. I have this acoustic that was like found in a wine cellar from the twenties, and uh, my brother, the architect, was was rebuilding a house that had a wine cellar, and he found this old guitar down there. And the lady who owned the house was like, um, "You could just take that. We don't, we don't even use anything." Down that shit's there. haunted. <laughs> and he was like, my brother's a guitar player. And she was like, just give it to your brother. So, so she, so she essentially gave me the guitar and I wrote all the hot air balloon stuff on that guitar. And so what I'll do is I'll play that guitar for half an hour 
well, just randomly and I'll record the whole half an hour. Oh. And then I'll go back and listen to it. And the parts that I really like are never the parts that I enjoy the one I listen to it. And I'll cut the parts that I actually like out of the recording. And then I'll put them into the studio system and I'll be like, okay, I could maybe make songs out of this. And that's one example. I have a couple others too. Wow. So that, but just, it's designed to just be like a brainless way mm. to get from zero to something. You know, it's like you just play the guitar for half an hour. There's going to be something in there. You know, it's good to play the guitar for half an hour. Frankly, it's not bad for my job, you know, so this is good for my job. and then uh, and then there's going to be something in there. And, then, and that something is has been the root of a lot of songs huh. that lo- one little moment in there where you're like, oh, that was sick. And then you cut that out and you, you just delete the rest. Wow. So are we going to get to see the, the space opera? Yes. What's the deal? Yeah, well, what's what's we're, going we're on with playing this? Sp- we're playing the space opera at Webster Hall in New York uh, next Friday. So oh, eight wow. days from now. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're debuting it. I mean, it's going to be an interesting show. We're hoping to have some guest vocalists if we can work it out. We're going to have a lot of costumes and designs and extra lights and extra fancy stuff. The show's sold out. And uh, it's going to be really, really, really cool. We're going to play the songs in order. And it's long. It's like... You know, 250 minutes of music straight or something like that. We'll put a break inside of there, but that's basically what it is. We're putting the songs on Spotify now, so you can go to Spotify and you you can listen to chapters one, two, and three, which have been released. And then chapter four comes out next week, like right on show day. So so it'll all be on Spotify. Is this like a full stage production with actors? No, it's not too crazy. Okay, Uh, okay. we're, We're not, you know. I mean, I eat a gummy every day. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not going to be like, you know, dancers oh and stuff God. like that. It'll be chill, but the music will be on. And um, yeah, we haven't played it in order for everyone yet. I think we kind of kept the order under wraps because we hadn't released the album yet. Oh. There was a lot. There was a lot of people posting online what they thought the order was. And there was, it was always almost correct with one little twist. And instead of correcting them, we just kind of let everybody, you know, talk about it and, and uh, you know, have their conversations about it and have fun with it. So, and then once, once we play it, those conversations are, are know, done. Yeah. So yeah, d- folks don't even really know what the plot is yet, right? Well, I think they do know the plot at this point. We did the, uh, on the podcast, oh. we have gone deep oh. on the space opera. Oh, okay. So fans of the podcast have gotten full on explanations from the whole band has been interviewed myself and Joey for a lot of it, because the two of us kind of put this thing together at the beginning. Um, Aaron's been on a lot because Aaron's been in it from the beginning as well. And we just basically cooked this thing together. There's a lot of details and there's a lot of story points. And there's a lot of stuff that if there was no podcasting, I don't know how we would get this stuff across. I don't know how people would know. You would have to put out like a 20 page booklet with a, a, you know, mail in to this address and we'll mail you the (laughs) booklet that goes along with the whatever. You'd have to have somebody. I think think we should do some kind of booklet. Like a comic book. Yeah. Yeah. We did. We looked at a comic book. We did look at it. It was 100K. So it was a little pricey for us at the moment. Considering we don't even know if we're going to sell like more than four copies of it, hundred k for four boxes. copies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, your copy oh, is six thousand dollars. But uh, <laughs> wow. but, I mean, they might be worth six thousand dollars if we made them at some point in time. We have a classical album on vinyl that's worth a couple grand, and um, so stuff does. There is like a little bit of a secondary market. I think the comic book's an incredible idea. I, I hope we do get to do it at some point. So when you're doing something like that live, obviously it's different than playing a, a biscuits show. Uh, do you, do you get nerves before stuff like that? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think I did a, uh, I've determined what my nerves are. My nerves are tour fright is what I call it. What is that? I don't get stage fright. I mean, this, uh, we're standing on the side of stage. They're going to hand me a guitar. I'm fine. I'm fine. I do it all day long. I get tour fright because the Biscuits play a rotation of songs that's really large. And I mean, you guys are used to this because all the bands, probably, you guys listen to a lot of bands that also do this. Mm-hmm. 
But the Biscuits also do a lot of new stuff. We're always dropping live music samples from like techno acts. And we right. dropped Hanging Tough by the New Kids oh the other day. Like <laughs> I saw that. We're always doing all this, all this weird, like, and I have to learn those songs. Even though it's just a drop of a sample, the chords still have to be right. Like the movement has to be right. The parts need to be right. So I have to actually learn those songs for us uh, and the whole band does. And so I have a lot of, uh, Oh, just a lot. I get very confused and overwhelmed. Like I have feelings of overwhelm in my life. It's just things are very overwhelming, and I don't know how to deal with overwhelm. Like, I, I, what do you guys do? Like, do do you shut down when you're overwhelmed, or do you like pick the most important thing and do it? Or what is your option? I'll let uh, uh, we'll each answer because we're all f- really, yeah, we- really different. Go ahead, Mel. What do you? How do you deal with overwhelming per- performance wise? Uh, perform. I mean, I get internally nervous you know like my body temperature raises and I get hot you know internally but I just do it anyway like I don't it's just you no matter what you just put out of my head whatever it is that's even if I'm like physically feeling it and just do the thing because I'm not I wouldn't ever consider myself a performer I never went into podcasting to be noticed that's why I like podcasting Cause it was behind the camera. Yeah. And it, it was amazing. I was like, Oh, I can be myself. This is amazing. Nobody cares about what I'm wearing or looking like. And as we started podcasting ch- has changed a lot in seven years where it's more of a show and you, people want to see you and, and stuff. And so it's still awkward for me to be up front. And so I just literally deal with it. I don't know. Like I, you don't I, have any techniques. I, there's no techniques. My technique, I guess, is from years of yoga as I know how to control my breath. And so if I'm like, you know, I just I can just switch into that. Like, okay, I'm not going to notice my my heat anymore. I'll I'll focus on my breath now so I can like at least have that as a um, fallback. Yeah, maybe as a fallback or as, as a second, you know, thing. But I just it's like go overwhelm is kind of a heart like I maybe get bitchy I know I definitely get bitchy if I'm overwhelmed and I'll no. maybe start like you know <laughs> no. I'll, I'll start no, poking man. it on Aaron You're fucking awesome <laughs> all the time I've, well, I've heard that's not true no. <laughs> <laughs> I just know it for myself for sure because I that edge has to go get off of you somehow you know what I mean like at yeah. least for you you have a guitar you can like play it you know what I mean like you can literally move it through you but there's no instrument it's just my voice and my voice i'll get bitchy <laughs> you yeah, know I, like yeah. i'd say well and then my, similar to mel like like many years of discipline in yoga many <laughs> many years of discipline in drinking <laughs> like liquid, liquid cur which i don't drink as much now but like i, yeah, I just you barely drink anymore I, well, but but when it's come in cl- like when we went on stage at, at ophelia's up in denver like taking the stage like that I I had a I was like and, we, and we're there with Andy Frasco so he's got a bottle of Jamesons and all the mixers and the greener and I'm like you know what uh, yeah yeah Andy I'll take I'll take one of those one of the two of those fine no problem like liquid courage all of a sudden it's like okay now I'm loose I'm not thinking about it I let it go in fact Mel even joined me on oh, that yeah I and did. she's like that does sound kind of good you don't hardly ever oh drink, i i don't you know? really drink but also it what calms one thing that i did because you're right that's a good example i just kind of like ignored that we were going to go on stage the whole time i didn't think about it i started talking to like todd glass i go to the bathroom i'm like doing all this shit and not thinking about stage time at all so right. that was ignoring it and that's not a, that's not dealing with it well <laughs> yeah. for me it's like yeah when whenever we're doing something live i'm overwhelmed because oh, yeah. i'm handling all the everything like logistics and meeting and talking to the people and giving them our music and all the shit that goes into it so i get really short oh yeah with everybody is yeah. that's that's what? how that's how they all know that I, i'm i hate to say <laughs> i hate to say it, but the, the jewishness really comes out yeah, yeah it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the jewish businessman like dude quit fucking around it's like but uh, dealing with it, man, it's it's kind of like what Mel said. Like, I try and forget that I'm getting ready to do whatever it is we're getting ready to do. I try and just, mm-hmm. like, put it out of my head and breathe through it. And I've noticed 
that like at Ophelia's, we were standing back behind the curtain. They're playing our music. We were getting ready to go out. I felt like I was going to fucking pass out. I was like, oh my God. Cause that was like, that's the biggest room we've ever been at. Mm-hmm. And the minute I got out there and sat down at the mic, it just like calm gone. Yeah. Completely gone. So I just try and keep that in the back of my head. But I, there's no technique then. So there's no, not but, really, but, w- but I would imagine like you've played, I mean, do you even know how many shows you've played? I feel like it's like 2000. I mean, I feel like I've played every single room in the world. And um, (laughs) yeah, I think, I mean, yeah. After that, you you, got to be 2000 or something. I mean, I think there was like, you can see, you can look on like nugs and you can look on archive.org and stuff and see how many shows they have. And it's thousands and thousands of shows. And that's not even all of them. That's it. That's insane. So, so, I mean, I imagine that like for you, that moment before getting on stage is like me getting in my car and turning on the key. Like, it's yeah who gives a shit i'm just this but is the, the stakes are always different you know like like you're the opera that's different than a new year's show and a new year's show is different than a run and you know yeah. what i mean like they're they're all different stakes and so for whatever reason however you're feeling you can nerves happen nerves yeah. ha- like it can happen for whatever well i mean look we we played the base of mount fuji in japan for an entire audience of japanese people um i walked everybody else was puking on the side of the stage and i walked on stage like it was nothing the 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 actual like i'm walking on stage thing it it doesn't affect me at all and i watch it affect other people i feel bad for them because i've seen it a lot the part that gets me is the how the hell am i supposed to remember how to do all this correctly all the things in your head to prove yeah it's like how am i supposed to remember all this i have to hit this vocal i gotta hit this guitar i gotta hit this that we're changed here like the biscuit set is so kind of unplanned and fully planned at the same time mm-hmm. and it's a lot of uh i have to i have just a lot of stuff to remember that's not play music a lot of it is like play guitar in such a way <laughs> as to create this scenario which then hopefully everyone will react to in such a way which they'll always react to in some variation or different version of that and then follow that down whatever rabbit hole that goes down to and then try and land it in a spot where then you can then build it up to the chorus of this other song but holy that's yeah. fucking, well and then it, I, that's I imagine, intense, man. I imagine too like and then if you're planning something and it doesn't work out you can't get hung up on that you got to let that shit go and just keep yeah, going yeah. but yeah, what yeah, if yeah. your plan Second. is direct your your future plan is directly, directly linked to that <laughs> thing that didn't go off well <laughs> every night now we're fucked Dang. <laughs> you so stop the show and like let me explain what what just supposed happened to happen. <laughs> well you all then are really i wish i could do that yeah. <laughs> Well, Th- that's a like really like a master at work when when you can plan something not let it go according to plan and still make it seem like that was the plan all along yeah that's yeah, incredible you, you have to make it seem like it was the plan all along and you have to make it seem like you just meant to do that i mean those are the things <laughs> but what we can't do is remember that old grateful dead transition where they would just go down to complete silence and then they just pick up into the new song yes and and <laughs> i was that, like they're, they're, it's that, telepathy <laughs> yeah that was that was what was great about the 70s in my opinion is we're not allowed to do that we have to do this like exact rubik's cube collaboration of the two moments and uh, we get pretty good at it after a while but it's it's definitely like one of those things where when we're planning the show at let's say four or five o'clock before we go on stage at nine um, I'm looking at the set list like that's my moment of anxiety where I'm like, oh, wow, I have to figure all this stuff out, put it here and make sure that it's like being dispensed at the correct rate while I'm in the middle of this total chaos jam because our jams are not we don't have plays or, you know, routines in our jam. We don't even have chord progressions in our jam. So we we don't really we use them, but we don't have them as any kind of structure. Mm. And it's the lack of structure in the biscuit jam that creates that, uh, you know, that that intense craziness that the biscuits get to and also the uniqueness of what we're doing on stage, because there is no structure. Is that wow. like is that happen because of how tight you guys are like as a group because it's been so long like how how did it reach this point you know 
Well, I think when we were kids, we 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 really studied the other jam bands that came before us, which was obviously Fish and the Dead, but it was maybe the Allman Brothers, some of Jimi Hendrix's stuff, like Band of Gypsies. Was there was a lot of other jam bands out at the time, and we just looked at what everybody was doing, and um, we tried to do something different. We just really tried mm. to be different, and I think we accomplished that. The main thing was that I was really firm about chord progressions as a guitar player a chord progression really locks you in and turns whatever you're doing into a solo because mm. as a guitar player you're in that solo position in the jam and it's hard to get out of that position nowadays i have like 17 different synthesizers that i can turn my guitar into <laughs> and i can just hide behind the keyboards in some supportive synth line for 20 minutes you'd never know where i went I would just disappear from the jam. And then I'm playing chord progressions with the bass player I'm playing because I can play synthesizers nowadays. But back in the day, it was a guitar with some distortion pedals, a couple of compressors and a delay. And you're always in some form of that guitar mode in the jam. And if the jam happens to lock into a harmony progression, then the other things going on in the jam are very uh, harder to notice. The harmony is the more powerful item. Mm -hmm. And then the guitar just becomes a solo that time. And the biscuits, we were really much trying. We 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 identified like the Grateful Dead method, which was Jerry soloing the whole time, and the rest of the band is kind of morphing in and out of these kind of moments and visuals and stuff like that, while Jerry's just kind of you know hummingbirding on top of the whole thing right. in his way, right? And we we also thought that you know like even Fish was doing that a lot, so we just thought, you know. Maybe the Biscuits would be the band that is a jam band, but isn't like a guitar led jam band. Oh. And so I would find these moments where it was forcing me to lead the band. And I would say, OK, we have to cut that. We have to stop doing that. Oh, or we, we're just doing what everybody else is doing is hitting the lights and hitting the moment. Right. And, you know, a lot of jam bands do do that. And, I'm, you know, that's great. But for the Biscuits, we were very focused on, like, can we find something else down the road of music? Like, can we can we just go further just to go further, just to see if we can find our own sound in our own moment? You did so it. That's kind of what happened. That's totally yeah. really dope. I love that because I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's hard not to hear the guitar in that way in most music, but to be able to still enjoy that instrument, but it not be the Focus. first thing that smacks you in the face. That's a, like a good feeling out on the dance floor. It like literally lets you switch it up, you know, how you dance and how you're listening. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I, I mean, you don't need me to tell you, you guys absolutely did it. A, a biscuits concert was different than any other show that I've ever been to. Yeah. <clears throat> By far. Yeah, we danced differently, right. everything. Okay. Yeah. It would stink. It's so, I mean, you've been around the scene long enough now. You've seen bands come and go. You've seen, like, the whole thing, the cycle over a few times. And what do you think about what's going on now with the with the scene? I feel like there's I a love pr it. pretty good crop of bands out there right now, right? I take the scene right now. I'm, I'm a really big fan of a lot of the bands that are in the scene. I listen to the bands in the scene right now, which is crazy. I never did that before. Um, I don't know. I really like it. I feel like the scene is very vibrant. There's a lot of different bands doing really well. And I just feel like that's a good sign. Yeah. Um, you know, and the, the scene has just been around the block a bunch of times. So there's a lot of music to draw from and to play and to cover and to be a part of. And there's a lot of music, musicians to play with. Mm -hmm. There's like kids of the old heads coming up and doing <laughs> yeah. cool things. Dogs in a pile. Those yeah, guys, yeah. Those, those guys are cool. So yeah, I, I like where the scene's at right now. I'm, I'm, well, one of the reasons why we like kind of took the biscuits out of retirement is it just seemed like the music business is where we were needed the most in the world. Oh. And um, I feel like that's still the truth. Like the, the biscuits have their place in the scene, um, but it is a scene, and it's important that there's a lot of bands and that there's a lot of fans out there supporting all the bands, which seems to be the case now, which is great. Coming out of a pandemic and seeing a bunch of jam bands doing really well is an amazing sign that I'm super happy. I was yes. fucking terrified yeah. when, like, towards the, you know, middle to the end of COVID, I was like, wow, are we coming back from this? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, the, who knows? And to be, what, we're four years out now or whatever. Yeah, I'm stoked to, to see where we're at. No, 2020, it's 2024. 
But well, it didn't get away. Well, it didn't years get away from well, the beginning did, it, of the pandemic. Oh, the beginning. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant since the end. Yeah, I, was, I thought you were you're buffering it somewhere. Yeah, no. Yeah. When was the end? I don't even remember it's when the end was. Kinda it's lingering. still kind of lingering. It's going around. I don't know, man. It's 20. like the, the poop on your shoe you didn't know, and you're walking like three miles. It's like in the grooves <laughs> now. Like put the hose to it, and you still smell it. Well, yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't even see it anymore. anymore. And for us, it was kind of when we finally got to go see a show again out at Hornings. That was like towards the end of 21. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, yeah. What's what are a couple of bands that you're listening to? Well, I mean, look, I'll listen to some Billy Strings. Ooh. I will put on some Billy Strings. Yeah. Um, you know, I listen to you know what all the guys who I've listened to Dogs in a Pile. I'll listen to Goose. I'll listen to like if Fish has some <laughs> cool jam that they're doing. I'll listen to that. Um, I'll check out uh, who else am I listening to? Um, I've been listening to a lot of like the, 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 the new crop of techno kids. Oh, wow. Um, we just got like, hipped up to daily bread. Have you? Yeah. Daily bread. I listen to Ooh. Maddie O'Neill. I've been listening yeah. to, okay. so there's like, there's some good kids out there doing really great things and it's cool. I yeah, like it. We were at, we were at a, at Humphrey show last weekend and this cat in front of me is like, Hey man, have you, have you checked out daily bread? And I was like, no, he's like, Bro, it's high class drug dealing music. You gotta check it out. It's the best <laughs> shit ever. <laughs> I was like, okay. Put it on the car right. home. I'm like, okay, yeah, it is. It's high class drug dealing music. Right on. Perfect. Yeah, they say that about everything. I mean, look. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, yeah, and the Umphreys guys, obviously, I've been friends with those guys forever, and it'd be nice to. Uh, we did a great tour with them like two years ago. It was cool. So. That'd be a great we gotta get in the stu- I can't believe we've never been in the studio with these guys. That's kind of been my focus recently is how do I get in the studio with all these musicians that are like popping around now that are making great music. Like now that I have like the, the ability to sit in a studio, I like I did a lot of work during the pandemic, learning how to make music. And there's all these obviously today didn't work out great. But, you know, <laughs> in general, I've been crushing it. So it's like. You know, how do I get in the studio with these guys talking to Frasco about getting in the studio? I'd love to get in with Umphreys. There's so many bands I'd love to get in the studio with and just like apply kind of my approach to artistry to what they do. Oh, wow. Which I really, I would love to do that a couple of times with some people, see you, how it works. You know what we need? We need like a psychedelic We Are the World. With jam band, right. and yeah, like you know, pr- I just watched that video the other day. <laughs> so yeah, good. we it's did so too. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know Lionel Richie was part of that thing. Did I you know, know that? No, like, I no, not until we watched the. I, well, the thing. I, well yeah. I did because he's got the first part. There comes a time. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Waylon Jennings just walked the fuck out. He was like, "I'm done, man. I'm out of here." Did he? I Wait, gotta go back yeah, and watch that. It's out been on a long. Time. John, where are you? Where are you in in the world? Like, where do you live? I'm a, we're outside of Pennsylvania right oh, Pennsylvania. now. Pennsylvania. Okay. I was going to say, if you move to Denver, you'd be in the studio with everybody all day, <laughs> every day. That's the spot. <laughs> if I moved to Denver, I'd be on a ski mountain all day. Oh, day. right I'd on. Be like, wouldn't it would be in not, the studio I anymore. Would not. My job would be done. I'd be one of those guys that eats rice and broccoli and chicken every day for dinner. <laughs> my exact weight so that I could ski exactly, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> All about skiing. All right, you, yeah. you brought up food. Yeah. Before we go, I'm going to ask you a silly question. Uh, if you, if you, I, I think you, if you, you you're no, like no, looking you, at me. It's like we're talking if you about. eat a waffle, do you yeah. want the waffle stuffed or not stuffed? Oh, stuffed, no question. Oh. <laughs> okay, oh, what do you, what do we stuff in the waffle with? Uh, that weird cheesy stuff, cream and, cheese, kinda. and blueberries oh. and uh, caramel. Oh my god. Ooh, that All sounds right. fuck yeah. Caramel? That's funny. Okay. He asked that too. I just saw we saw a thing the other night about what was that? Oh, feed was that on Oh wait, no, it was a video. So I ordered us the next day. I was like, guess what? Oh, I just ordered yeah, us a sure stuffed did. waffle. That's maker. why I asked. <laughs> we were just talking about stuffed yeah, waffles. Yeah, so we're thinking about things when it arrives. Um, my kid eats waffles right out of the freezer, frozen. Oh my god. What? Like a <laughs> like crunchy, like snap? Cold? Well, they're not that cold. They, they get they get a little warm. They get a little soft. I actually was like, because because he can he can open. It's one of those lower freezers that he can open, right? So he can open and close the freezer door. So he doesn't need to ask us for food. So he'll go in there in the middle of the night and just get himself a waffle. And I'll walk in the kitchen. I'll be like, "What are you doing up? And what are you eating?" 
And he'll be like, he'll be like, I'm having a waffle. <laughs> there. How, yeah. how old so, is he? He's four. And so <laughs> I'll take the waffle and I tried it. I tried the waffle and I was like, it's kind of better like this. <laughs> what? Like, it's, it's just kind of like, it's like a cool frozen treat. It's got the sugar crystals on it. All right. That dairy every once in a while. All right. That right sounds on. like a good late night, I like I got the munchies snack. Like, oh, that's after right. the gummy Waffle. kicks in. Yep. 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 John. I don't think it's good for you, but it's probably delicious. It probably you know? is. Uh, are we going to get more biscuits out west this At year? At some point? Yeah, I mean, we did two tours already, and both tours were a huge success. And we did uh, the kind of numbers on the tour that have people talking. So okay. yeah. I am very, very positively going to say that, I mean, definitely there's going to be some two-night stands. Ooh. And there's going to be some much bigger shows. Yes. Um, we sold out a lot of the shows, which nobody expects us to do. And we just like did real numbers in markets that we've like never done real markets in before, like San Diego and Seattle and stuff like that. So there's definitely another run coming in shortly. I would say probably soonish. Okay. And, um, I don't know. Everybody really liked the West coast fans. I thought every, it was just great. Every city we went to, it was different people. They were so cool. They loved the music. They were having a great time. And I just feel like that West Coast vibe matches what we're doing really well right now. Yeah, I, I have to agree. You said um, when you come to Portland, you know, you have to bring it. What is, why is that? What's the what's your thought process when you're in Portland that makes you feel like we can't slack over here? Well, I mean, look, Portland is a Mecca in some way. Like Portland is the hub of something. I'm not sure what it's the <laughs> hub of. But right? Portland is something of a hub. It's a, it's an extremely unique city and it's like it's like the it's like you got a Vancouver vibe. It's like you there and everybody is there is 100% into living there, you know? And yeah. and so everybody you talk to is like this is the spot, this is the great spot and there's a lot of culture there and the the state in general is really beautiful and so yeah. Got to bring it. It's yeah. Nothing to do with that weird Netflix show about the cult that lives around the corner. No. <laughs> no. Dude, I've talked about this on the show before, but like when we moved, we moved from Vegas eight years ago. Going to a show in Vegas is a yep. very different proposition than coming to a show in Portland. It's very different. Oh, I know. The, the, the fans that come to see music okay. here are here. They're, they're here for it. They're mm -hmm. here for the music 100%. So the experience of being at a show here is vastly different and way better. And so, yeah, I mean, I totally get it. In Portland, it's it's fucking weird here. So yeah, you gotta, gotta and in Vegas, everybody was half the crowd didn't even know why they were there. Got comps. They're drunk. They're pre, you know preoccupied. They're just there to be entertained yeah. in general. Like they don't care what is entertaining them. They just yeah. want to dance. Dancing to, bear, naked women, yeah, whatever well, clowns, yeah. <laughs> circus, circus. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I lived in Vegas for years, and uh, I like the people that live there. We had a good time, but I did notice that whenever someone would show up for the weekend their plans were a little bit more exciting than i was able oh to yeah attack it. yeah <laughs> every weekend was three idiots that i knew from way back when who were gonna have a craziest weekend ever and wanted me to come with them and it was just like i don't know how to handle this yeah this is is when did you live in vegas I lived in Vegas 2017, 16 and 17, and some of 18. Oh, wow. shit. That's right when we split. I, yeah. 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 It's I a, started it's, commuting to LA and then I just, just moved to LA. It's a strange, strange place to live, man. So, John, do you get the opportunity to go see live music? Uh, not as much as I would like to. Um, yeah. Not as much yeah. as I would like to. Yeah. It's a, it's a trip to me to think that. The thing that you create because you love music becomes the thing that you have to do and stops you from seeing it. It's but you're doing it and it's yeah. your thing and you have to put your energy. He's into a doer that. of the thing, yeah. not a not well, a, 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 you know, participant. But, but you still, know, on the still other side. He's a, I'm sure he's a music fan still. Sure, of like, course. You got to be. To, to be I mean, they used to they used to make fun of me because they would give me tickets to shows and I'd be like, well, can I get backstage with the tickets? They'd be like, fine. And then I'd go to the show and then I'd sit backstage the whole time. And they'd be like, what are you doing back here? The show's out here. And I'd be like, this is where I know how to be. Yeah. <laughs> is, That's where you're comfortable. This is where I'm comfortable. Yeah. You know? wow. I'm Can basically at work right here. now. 
Yeah, I don't know what to do out there in the crowd with everybody. All right. Well, I want to ask one last. What's your favorite, most memorable concert from all time? Oh, shit. Oof. That's a tough question. Um, you can't say the 12 year old one because you already talked about that I one. I already gave that story. Yeah, you um, gave that story. Uh, I don't know. Um, I re- I saw a Radiohead show in like 2009 that was really, really awesome that I loved. Um, just watching Tom York go from piano to guitar and the, those vertical laser things they had. And the song, that album was so good. Um, I mean, I've, I saw a couple of fish shows in the early 90s, which were unfucking believable. Um, just when they were like doing that, I'm going to play a signal and the band's going to do something randomly thing that they used to do. Oh, yeah. um, the Simpsons thing, but they had like a whole array of things the that they were doing. Language, and it was yeah. like very subtle at times. But I was like a musician, so I was like kind of understanding it or something like that. <laughs> um, and then uh, I don't know. Um, you know, the, any any number of, I mean, Candyman at MSG was probably the greatest musical moment. I think Jerry's guitar solo during Candyman at MSG was, wow. well, I walked away from that saying that's the best thing I've ever seen anyone do on guitar. And it was a Candyman solo, so wow. I don't know what I was thinking <laughs> at the time. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know. I've just seen like so that. many great shows, you Those know? Those are good. The Radiohead yeah. one, I think, would be, in if you asked yeah. us, would all be in our top three. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, they had a couple years where that stuff was just, uh, it was so weird and so cool, and the vocals were so good. I, I don't know. It was an amazing band. Yeah, yeah. Amazing very group. much so. Well, shit, John, when you come back through Portland, let's try and kick it, man. Yeah, yeah. We missed it just by a second because our schedule was like, we were in Portland for exactly enough time to play the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, well, uh, yeah, next time we should chill. I'd love to I'd love to hang out with you guys more. All yeah, right, man. Well, well, thanks for doing this with us and, yes. and the perseverance, man. Break a leg with the opera, man. Right on. Right on. All right, brother. You have a good night. Right, guys, much appreciated. We'll yes, talk to you soon, man. John, peace. See you soon. Aww. Disco Biscuits. He is, he is so fun to talk to. Yep. That's somebody you could just like... Hang just kick it all yeah, day yeah. and just joking. Yeah. You know how when people say, oh, I feel like I'm, I was in your living room. I, f- I felt like we were all hanging out in the same spot yeah. yep. just yep. now. It's just a, think about very like comfortable. the sheer volume of sounds that have happened in the room that he's in. I was thinking about that. Like, Dude. If you counted like the, the frequencies and notes that have been played in that room over time, what would be the like total sum? In the hundreds of billions, maybe, you know, every it's, note and thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that would be a mountain. It's incredible to think about what he was talking about, that overwhelm of information in his head that is not strictly musical. It has nothing to do with the music. It, well, the playing. It's, it's performance. Yeah, it's it has, music. <laughs> it's memorization. It's it's um com- like communication with the band. It's maybe nerves it's maybe if he has anything else in his head what if it's his son's birthday that day or Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean like all so much stuff and then to still be able to execute without flaw from our eyes well and that you know what i mean like maybe yeah okay maybe he missed his note or did whatever but like from the fans perspective we're like fuck yeah woo but he's got a spilling over well that's a te- uh, information also a testimony to like how human beings how we underestimate ourselves regularly yes like you've done Agreed. something over and over and over and over and over a thousand million to two thousand times and still you're like oh shit how am i gonna do this am i gonna be able am to i gonna be this? able to, yeah am i gonna be able to pull this off when you've done it two thousand times before and I was thinking about this when he was talking about like having to be able to let go completely in a jam and not having any structure to knowing where to put the nuance and make this happen and make, you know, all that it's what the disco biscuits are doing is like the ultimate form of chaos and control. Yeah. Like he, like he said, it's like totally like rehearsed and completely unrehearsed. Completely not. Yeah. That's (laughs) wild. I can't wait to go see him again now. He, he, I say this was a very good educator. Like he's very good at explaining yes. his process and 
their sound and everything. Yes, he's Apple. Very good yeah, at I remember it. that from and last he's time. He's very we good to him. at doing everything with, with a, a very good sense of humor. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I I didn't very, realize how what a prolific writer he was. No, and that's really a amazing skill to be able to just sit down and like, all right, I'm gonna play my guitar. Okay, let's use this and make a whole freaking song out of that. That's talent. Yeah, very. That's special. Yeah, man. All right. You well, got something dang, there, John. John. Keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, You're you guys should stick it. to it, man. You guys are good at that. You should keep going. <laughs> Quit your day job. Do yeah. it full time. Oh. Thank God for coming out of retirement. <laughs> Jeez. Um, well, all you Biscuits fans that are out here on the West Coast, um, why don't you uh, light a candle and uh, do a little dance so that and, we can get that tour announcement. And also to all you West Coast Disco Biscuits fans. Well done. Well done. Yeah. You, you heard it here. Yeah. yeah. They, they loved it. The numbers were good. There's talks. They're they're coming back. And the fan, and, and he mentioned the fans' like demeanor, too. Like, yeah. That's not like they were nice and they were like welcoming. I, like, that's what I found. That's, you know, it's funny. Like you go online on social media and you see Disco Biscuits fans get, you know, clowned a little bit saying that the, you know they're all fucked up and drugs or whatever whatever and every band every, band every fan of jam bands has that right <laughs> or but, is, that, is true but going to the show here like i told him i was blown away that there was somebody that would take the time out of their show well, to educate me you know what i mean and uh, and also that show was oversold yeah. yeah, it was yeah. fucking it packed, was so and packed. everybody was everybody was cool for a yeah. whole a lot of times when it's oversold, people are getting cranky and edgy, fucking, hey, and especially a dance band. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's my favorite jam is dance jam. No, it's not. You like dance, funk. Dance, dance. I like funk. That's my favorite. What did I just say? <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> I thought I, I thought you liked uh, like like Perry Como with the Schnitzer. <laughs> Would you please sit down? I'm trying to watch the show. She's gonna Actually, go to Tedeschi Trucks. That, you know what? She doesn't have that. The the Schnitzer. Or what am I thinking of the other one that we went to see? Zakir. Is that the Schnitzer? No, that's not the Schnitzer. The that's, Schnitzer's that's where Keller. you went and saw Cypress yeah. Hill. Oh yeah. Well, you know what? That was pretty. The the seats were closer, so it seemed better. Meaning more. I don't. They, it wasn't interactive. People were still sitting down during. Mm-hmm. But the last couple songs, they started to kind of. Do you remember going and seeing Tedeschi Trucks? Yes, and, and I hated it. Oh, I didn't hate their performance. They were amazing. I did not hate the concert. I hated everything around and in the concert i couldn't like, believe that this music was happening the most jamming music and people are just sitting and people were sitting down and mel and i were like well up and, dancing people were like giving us stink eyes so we also, ended up going in the hall like soulful right. like how could you not like emote physically when you're hearing such soul like even just like a sway people were stiff as boards yeah like That's watching like- a, a spelling bee it's a, it's a beautiful place and everything, but it is like it's like a theater, yeah, like an opera theater. There is conduct. You guys, and, we're just that's not our vibe. No. That's not, we're even at Wolf Brothers, it was like that. Yeah, yeah. We we did the same thing. We got up and moved to the like hallway area up and back because nobody wanted to stand up. Not that I mean, not that, that was that jamming, but it was like fuck, yeah. man, we're. Elevated, wrong for place, the show. Wrong. We wanted, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, we want to have fun. What do they say? Know your audience. <laughs> Read the yeah. room. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, what did we learn today? We learned that the Disco Biscuits are one of the hardest working bands. I uh, I learned that I need to try a frozen waffle. Uh huh. That's true. John <laughs> stuffs his waffle with blueberries, cr- weird cheese, and caramel. And, and like, he has no problem getting on stage and shredding the shit out of that guitar. Okay. Anytime. And, he'll and he'll he, just do it. And he He's can fine. write an opera. All right. So that's what we learned today. We will be back on Monday with another episode of the No Simple Road Weekly Rewind. If you're new to the show, that's just the three of us hanging out talking about like Stuff. aliens or food or the... the you know, it, know I'll say this. It. I didn't tell you guys this, but like in my head after our Weekly Rewind last um, Monday or we did it on Saturday... Um, Somebody had reached out to me and I won't say who, but somebody was like, the weekly rewind this week was great. And, you know, just like 
mentioned it and, and specifically texted me about it. And I was like, in my own head before that text even came through, I'm like, that was, what did we even talk about? That wasn't even anything. Like it was kind of like, not lame, but it just like, what, what would you do? And, but then somebody liked it and somebody was like, that was a great. I feel like musicians go through the same thing. They'll be on stage and they'll be like, that show wasn't very good. And people are like, fuck yeah. Best and then, shit ever. Saw. And then I wasn't know. giving ourselves a hard time. Or anything. I was just like, well, I mean, it was kind of like a, a nothing podcast. What were we but talking about? I was talking about AI. Oh, yeah. And I, I was just, yeah, an iRobot and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I was The weekly rewinds sometimes are hard for me to remember. I listen back to those more than I do our inter. Like when we do a conversation interview, those are more memorable because the interaction of the person, yes. the weekly rewind sometimes is like the three of us sitting out on the patio. We don't remember everything we say to no. each other in the living room or in the kitchen or out on but the patio. But sometimes Aaron will do like a, you know, a like, theme. A prompt, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. This, so, is, this week we're going to yeah, talk so about then this. We can kind of remember in that way. But yeah. yeah. No, I, I would say most of the time by Wednesday, <laughs> I have no idea what we well, spoke but, about. So weekly rewind is more like an improv jam. Yeah. So okay. Like, so think about if we had to remember all these shows like John does, and then like have to like recreate, it. Rec- yeah, re- call back and then like jam in between and like come back to conversations. Nope. Could That's you, like- funny. Do you think about that? We've been doing this long enough that there's like like we have a we're like a one point oh two point oh like we do we do we have one point oh out on moved, the porch. We have moved through different. Things. Yeah, because what so would two point oh be the living the, the dining, dining room, room. three point oh <laughs> the, the dining bedroom. room the well, kind we of did floating. Out front. Remember we we did Peter Shapiro like, out front in the- <laughs> that was just a couple of times. Yeah, this couple. Is, we're in the four point oh era of No Simple Road right now <laughs> yeah. in the studio. Yes. That we're in. Not counting the changes the in between. So those are like one off shows. Um, yeah, those are like little club shows. Now we've moved up to like bigger house. <laughs> Anyways, whatever. We'll be back on Monday with another edition of the Rewind. Now you know what it is. We told you about it. Um, make sure to go follow us on the socials and go to our website because John said said it was cool. Yeah, John, thank you Thanks, for man. noticing that and go it. looking it up. That's dope. That's yeah. pretty cool. And uh how about this? John Barber looked at our website. I know. Check what? that out. Disco biscuits are <laughs> looking at our shit. And hey, I'm a, I I haven't said this at the beginning of the show if you're listening to the end. Thanks for spending time with us, but everybody that listens to No Simple Road, I'm asking you in 2024 to sign up for a dollar on Patreon. Oh. If I here's the deal. We are now charging a dollar a month for No Simple Road, but nobody's minding the store. It's the honor system. <laughs> oh, it's the honor system. It's the total honor system. So if you are a listener, No Simple Road, and you haven't signed up on Patreon, then, you know, you should probably go over and do that for a buck. And then you're paying what we're asking for the show. You One dollar a month. What's $12 cool? a year. I, I've never seen this anywhere else other than Oregon where there's like little miniature tiny like stands or houses and there's like eggs six bucks and there's a little envelope or a little box and you leave six bucks and you take the eggs or flowers 20 bucks and you put the 20 bucks in and you take flowers i've never seen that anywhere else except for where Oregon. are these at? I want to know where they're at. Where's the empire? Hey, no, I'm just kidding. no I, I see, I see them. They're, I've, they're seen, it a, they're I've seen it a lot, part. and I think that that's rad. And the honor that's system's a, cool. That's a great uh, thought, babe. Yeah. So that's the yeah. deal. And um, make sure that you take care of each other. And until next week, take care of each other. Smile at a stranger. Safety third. Hydrate. And um, and you send know, your favorite band some love. Yeah. Shoot them a DM on Instagram and say, Hey, I guys, just love you guys. Love you guys. Thanks for being awesome and doing what you do because yeah. we know it's hard. And uh, we'll see you next week. We love y'all. Peace.
scan it as I focus through the spot in the corner that is still intact. The react is both a defense mechanism as well as a fear. We've traveled this road before, so we may think. But it's a tad bit of strange similarities that feed an A equal A complex. The fears of your past do not equal the perplexities of the current road. One Hit Thunder is a podcast where we both celebrate and have a good laugh about bands and artists that had just one hit that we all know. Each week, we're joined by a guest from the world of music or comedy to learn more than you ever thought you would about some songs that you can't forget. And we decide if they brought the One Hit Thunder or were nothing more than a one hit blunder. Look, if you listen to the show, you're probably going to laugh and I guarantee you're going to crush next time the bar has music trivia. Tag Team, Jane Child, Meredith Brooks, Looking Glass, Sean Mullins, Eiffel 65, EMF, Crash Test Dummies, Crazy Town, Chumbawamba. We have hundreds of episodes in our back catalog and a new episode each week. So pass the duchy, make sure you're connected, and subscribe to One Hit Thunder wherever you get your pods.